In Creel Parametric, the Fill option for a pattern allows you to use a two-dimensional sketch to define a boundary that you want to fill in with a bunch of instances. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have a part. I want to lighten it with a bunch of holes, and I have a rectangular sketch that I want to use to fill it in. So let's click on the Hole feature. And from the mini toolbar, I can choose the pattern command. From the pattern type drop down list, you can choose fill. Also, if you right mouse click in the mini toolbar, you can choose the fill option. And right now, it's asking me to select a sketch. You can select a sketch from the graphics area if it's visible or from the model tree. So I will select this rectangle sketch. And let me change to one of my saved views. You can see that we have a number of different controls on here, both in the dashboard and also the graphics area. For example, we have a control for the spacing. You can double click on the value to change it, or you could use a drag handle in order to manipulate it dynamically. And let's leave it about so big. Also, there is the ability to control rotation, and I can rotate it at different angles inside of here. And there's also a drag handle for controlling how far it can come up to the boundary. And right now the value is zero, so it can go right up to the boundary of the sketch. If I drag it to the outside, I'm allowing it to go beyond the boundary or drag it to the inside. And I can say that it can only go within certain uh, distance of it. But again, if I double click and change to zero, it's going to reset its value. Let me change these other ones down to zero. Let me use a little bigger spacing inside of here to show you uh, what happens when you change the sketch that you're using. So we have our sketch collector up here. Right now I'm using the, re the rectangle shape. I can select a different sketch from the model tree. In this case, I'm using a spline sketch. And that way it updates. Let's hit the check mark. And you can see how it is now using that different shape. Let me hide the rectangle shape that was originally used. Also, you can use an open sketch. You do not have to have a closed sketch to use as your boundary. Let's edit definition of the pattern. And I will select this open sketch. And you'll notice that even though it is open, Creo Parametric has an algorithm that automatically closes off the sketch to define the boundary that you are filling in. So let's hit the check mark. And you can also create a sketch while you're in the pattern tool. For example, let me select this and I'm going to right click on the pattern. And to get rid of it, you could choose either delete or delete pattern. Be aware that the delete command will also get rid of the lead feature, but I want to lead, leave the lead feature intact, so I will choose delete pattern instead. And let me turn on, make sure some of my other different datums are visible. And so let's create a pattern of this hole. Again, I'll click on it and then choose pattern from the mini toolbar. And for the type of pattern, I can right click and change to a fill pattern. If I don't have a sketch that I want to use, on the right hand side of the ribbon, there is a datum drop down menu that will allow me to create a sketch while I'm inside of the feature. And let's sketch on this surface, and I'll choose this datum plane to face the right hand side of the screen. And partially placed, let me grab another sketch reference. For simplicity, I am going to use the center rectangle, and let's locate it about over here. And let me change some of the different dimensions. Change that to a value of 50. Let's use 500 over here, and then 300. And while I'm inside of here, before I get out of the sketch feature, let me change to a no hidden line for a moment. 
I'm going to drop in a datum point into the sketch to show you something else later on. And be aware I'm using the point command from the datum group, not the point command from the sketching group. The point command from the sketching group will create an entity that exists only inside of the sketch, but if I use the point entity from the datum group, that will create a datum point in my model. And I'm just dropping it right at the center of the sketch. That's good, I'm ready to get out of sketch mode, so let's hold down the right mouse button to get to the check mark. And let's change back to a shading with edges mode. And for my sketch, let's hit the play button to resume the dashboard. And that sketch that I just created is automatically used as the boundary. Let me change back to my saved view. And let's decrease the spacing a little bit. And right now, you'll notice that my hole, the lead feature of it, is not located at the center of this sketch. There is an option, and I'll be honest, this doesn't work the way that most people expect it to. If I go to the Options tab, there's this option here to use an alternate origin. And for the alternate origin, if I select that datum point that I just created, it's going to look like it's shifting the entire uh, pattern in order to make sure that it's centered on the middle of the sketch. And you would think that it's actually going to change the location of the lead feature, but it does not. Uh, when I hit the check mark, you'll notice that essentially it's going to end up shifting the boundary, the sketch that I used uh, for it. And so it's kind of particular. It's used if your center of your feature it, it's, if you do, if you want to center your fill pattern on something other than the geometric center of the sketch. So again, it works a little bit differently than you might expect. But let's edit definition because there are some other options I want to show in here. I'm not going to use the alternate origin in this case. We have different shapes that we can use. And if you go to the drop down list over here, we can choose to use a diamond pattern, which is essentially the square shape rotated. And you also have a hexagon pattern. I kind of like this one. And there's also a circle pattern. Let me reduce the radius in here so you can see more rings between the features. And as we're changing the shape, you'll notice that some of these collectors that you have are filling in different values, activate and deactivate. There's also a spiral option in here. And to make the spiral a little more obvious, let me change this. Let's make it value of 70. So there you can see a little bit more how it starts at the center and where is it going? Here and then spiraling out as it's being created. And the last shape option that you have in here is to use the boundary as a trajectory or a path to follow instead of using uh, it as an area to fill in. And in this case, you can even turn off the lead feature in the pattern by clicking on the preview dot when I hit the check mark. That way, the original hole that was used to create the fill pattern is not included in the pattern itself. Let's edit definition and I will resume the lead feature and let's change the shape back to a hex and hit the check mark. And that way we have our pattern of lightning holes created in the model. One other option to show you, I'm going to switch over to a different model. Here I have a part with a curved surface and a hole was created using a point to locate it and that point is an on-surface point. So for example, if I edit definition, go to the placement tab, you can see that its location is defined by a point. I'm going to take this hole and I'm going to pattern it using a sketch. Let me unhide this sketch over here. So like before, I will click on the hole feature, and then I can access the pattern command either from the mini toolbar or from the ribbon and change the type to a fill pattern and select this particular uh, surface that I want to use, or excuse me, the sketch that I want to use. And for the spacing, uh, let's use a spacing of, let's say, 0.75, yeah, just make it a little bigger. And hit the check mark, and there we have our pattern created. 
And if I change to a hidden line mode, you can see here that basically all the different instances are vertical, just like the lead feature in the pattern. But I can edit definition of the pattern, and from the options tab, I can choose to follow a surface shape. And I'll pick this curved surface over here. And when I click the check mark, you'll notice that now the orientation of the holes is changing based on the shape of the surface. And once more, I will edit definition just to show you that from the options tab, you also have the choice to use as projected or map to the surface space or map to the surface UV space. So there are some uh, minor distinctions between those different methods for following the surface shape. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.